In amateur radio, we typically use 50 ohm coax cable to connect our radios to our antennas. This is called the antenna system. And there's a lot of different cables on the market that have various performance and price considerations that we need to account for. Now, I know some people are thinking, hey, I use 75 ohm cables. Yeah, there are some instances where folks choose to or use 75 ohm cables based off of a design consideration, but the bulk of folks use 50 ohm cable. Here we have a piece of RG316, that's the designation or name of the cable, and uh, it has certain performance characteristics just like any other coax cable. Now typically with coaxial cable, you incur a loss when you send your signal through your transmission line, and that loss will vary with frequency. So typically the higher in frequency you go, the more loss you have in your cable. Now there's very expensive cables that you can buy that minimize this loss at higher frequency, but you don't really need that at lower frequencies. A lot of people say, well, I use LM400 because it's the best, it's the lowest loss. Well, if you're operating HF, you might not need LMR400 and LMR400 is pretty expensive stuff. So a lot of people will use a different type of coaxial cable. In today's video, what I want to do is I want to show you how we can measure insertion loss or attenuation through our coaxial cable. And you can use this technique to decide what cable meets your needs best. Now, if you have an antenna that's 100 feet away, do you really want to spend the money on LMR 400 or do you want to use something a little bit more affordable and maybe accept some of the losses that come with that? Well, you won't really know what you want to use unless you can measure the loss and determine if the loss is appropriate for your use case. So let's get this thing set up. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how we're going to do this test. The first thing that I want to mention is, yes, I know and understand that this coaxial cable is coiled. When you coil coaxial cable, so it's a good idea to always make sure that your transmission line runs are straight, you introduce something called reactants. Reactants creates a level of impedance which will further increase the amount of degradation or loss that you'll get when you run your signal through the cable. So this is not a real world example, but it's an example that I can fit on the screen while we do the test. Now for the test, we're going to use a nano VNA, in this case an H4. And what we're going to do is we're going to send a signal out channel zero or port, port one. Sometimes these things are labeled kind of goofy. And we're going to do what's called an S21 measurement. So S21 means that we're going to send a signal out of port one and then it's going to come in on port two. And as the signal traverses through this coaxial, there's an expected value for the signal strength that we expect over here. And we're going to be able to use a ratio between the input and output signals from the cable to come up with a loss measurement. We're going to use Nano VNA Saver, which is desktop software, to make this a little bit easier to see. But I wanted you to understand the test setup and configuration. Okay, so here we are in Nano VNA Saver. And I want to talk a little bit about this 316 that I use. I like using this whenever I'm operating outside of my ham shack, which isn't often to be frank, but I do it sometimes. And I like it because it's lightweight, it's flexible, and it's durable cable. So anyhow, when we take a look at the sweep that we've done, we run a sweep from 1 megahertz to 30 megahertz because I wanted to show the effects of the loss across the HF bands. And when we ran the sweep, we ran it in 10 segments to increase our data points along the way. I have various markers, one through three, that are particular frequencies. Now, they're not exactly on the frequencies I want because I have a data point limitation, but that's okay. This gives us the data that we're looking for. And here you can see as the sweep goes down that we're incurring more loss as we go higher in frequency, which is kind of the point of the video. So anyhow, if you look at marker one, what we have in the data table over here, we want to look at S21 gain. That's the type of chart that we're looking at. So when you look at marker number one, it's negative 0.38 dB down, which really isn't that big of a deal. There is loss there, but it's not a lot. Then at marker number two, when we take a look down here at our S1 gain, S21 gain, we're negative 0.74. So we're getting some more loss. But again, I'm not worried about it. Marker number three, we take a look at that. That is a dB and a half. And that's starting to add up to be a large percentage of our, of our signal. It's not a lot. If you go to 3 dB, that's half your signal. So 3 dB, if you're using 10 watts, for example, only 5 is making its way to your antenna from your radio. It starts to become a little bit of a consideration. Let's run the sweep again from 30 megahertz all the way up to 525 so we can include UHF and VHF bands. 
Okay, so I've removed my face from this one to make the chart a little easier to read, and perhaps for your enjoyment. Anyhow, when we take a look at the sweep that runs from 30 megahertz to 525 megahertz, we see some different stuff than we saw in the HF bands. We see more attenuation and more loss, telling us that this cable is more appropriately used on HF rather than UHF and VHF. So we take a look at marker number one. We can take a look at our S21 gain, and we can see that it's negative 1.9 dB. And this is starting to add up as we start to have more attenuation at the higher frequencies. When we come down here and take a look at marker number two, we see that we're negative 3.64 dB. Now, when you hit a 3 dB threshold, you either double or half your power. So in this particular case, if you're operating at 10 watts, only 5 watts is making its way from your radio to your antenna system. I don't think that that's acceptable. I would probably look for a different coaxial cable if I was operating on the 2 meter band. When we make a jump down here to the 70 centimeter band, or 440 as it's often called, we can take a look at our measurement and see that we are negative 7.228 dB. That's completely unacceptable in my book. So if we take a look at 10 watts out of our radio, we go down 3 dB and lose half, so now we're at 5 watts. We go down another 3 dB to be at negative 6, and we're operating at 2.5 watts, and then we tack another 1.2 dB of loss on there. We go down even further. So in this particular case, this cable is not what I'd want to use. Anyhow, that's really it for this particular video. I wanted to show how you can measure coaxial cable and then make a determination if this cable from a loss standpoint is appropriate for your use case. If you have any questions, please post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching.